And here we go, Virgo. This one's for you. Greetings. It's from Terra Illumination. This is your April 2019 mini generic love and relationship report. If you have never been here before, uh, just be patient. I'm going to do a little show and tell to get you appraised of what we do and how we do it. If you've been here before, please be patient. Otherwise, you can just skip straight, straight forward to the cards if you know what you're doing. Okay. Thank you for your indulgence. Okay. So cards are well, 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 well shuffled in advance. And I just go to the last second so that you guys are a witness. We'll come back here in just a second. I'm just clearing again right now. So this is essentially, you know, for people in relationship. But singles, you can watch this too if you really want to. The Terra Illumination, we work on the understanding that there's you, Virgo, another, and then there's a third entity itself called a relationship. And it's something that you guys own. It's like owning a business together. And it adds so much more depth of understanding to what happens and why it happens in relationship as opposed to relating one-on-one -on -one in a very three-dimensional manner. Uh, here at Terra Illumination, we try to go 5D and above, okay? I'm just, here's the illustration, okay? So you might have seen this before. This is the Terra Illumination Crucible spread. This is the crucible here. It's the whole thing. This is a living, breathing thing. And a crucible is actually a bowl type structure, uh, typically high refractory ceramic that's used in laboratories to conduct highly volatile experiments that put intense pressure on the laboratory. So it's very similar with relationships. Sometimes human relationships can be extremely challenging, extremely volatile, at the same time as extremely satisfying. Sometimes you can't have one without the other. That's typical of human humanity anyway. So the way the cards play out is you, the other. Deep in you, deep in the other, to the relationship itself. And then what is growing here? Think of this as like a little plant or something. You're actually growing things here. Also, what is the nature of the crucible? Is it very wobbly? Does it have legs? Is it porous? Is it flexible? Is it solid? Is it uh, durable? Also, this whole thing radiates and transmits energy. You're, you're receiving and transmitting energy, just like your whole relationship has an aura. People notice you and your relationship. People say, oh, this and this and this is about their relationship. They notice the energy of a, of a relationship, okay? All right, let's just get on with it. This will hopefully make sense the deeper we get into the reading, okay? So hang on to your hats, dear Virgos. Now, when we do this, please, I invite you to bring in your invisible friends, archangels, angels, loved ones from the great beyond, spirit guides, guardian angels, all of it. Make, some, make the most of this, because that's what we do here at Terra Illumination. This is a team effort. Also, you know the routines. Uh, watch for your sun sign, moon sign, rising sign, especially if each one's different, and one of them will resonate significantly more than the other. If you don't know much about those things, feel free to type into the channel, get to terraillumination.com and write in and I'll uh, give you some hints, uh, on tips on how to figure these things out. Okay? Singles, already, already you can watch these two if you really, really want to. Uh, but you have to allow for the laws of attraction. And then this energy over here of the significant other beings becomes what if. In other words, let's say someone did show up or you have your eye on someone. Okay? We don't predict the future here. I'm not going to tell you, oh, when is my twin flame going to show up? Oh, when is my soulmate going to find me? We don't do that here at Terra Illumination. We, you make your own decisions. You live your own life. I can give you storylines and information and uh, reflections and so on in order to help you. But ultimately, it's your responsibility. Okay? Thank you so, so much. Cards are well shuffled now. You'll see how things play out in just a moment. We're going to cut it up. Bless this deck. Bless every single card. Bless you, Virgo. Thank you for being here. Thank you for choosing Terra Illumination. Bless the whole channel. Bless the cameras, the internet, the wires, all of it, the lighting. Bless the viewers. Yay. Okay, this would be the energy that you're radiating. Think of yourself like a smartphone, okay? Transmitting and receiving energy. Over here, the significant other. Deep inside of you, deep inside of the other. Now, these energies might be very unapparent, okay? But they are there, okay? Over here at the core of the relationship itself, 
And can you see the crucible here? That's the idea. You see a crucible, and this is what is uh, fermenting, growing, blossoming, happening, okay? And this would be the energy of you and the other as we intimate and separate, as we all do, just like ocean waves in the context of love and relationship. Out here, we're going to look at the circumstantial energy, environmental influences, and that relates to this energy out here that we talked about earlier. Okay, so here we go. We're starting with the hermit. So my feeling is that there's a strong like energy. It might be like a bit of a hangover a sh or a shock effect uh, that you might still be dealing with coming out of March, because in March there was a very strong new moon eclipse. Sorry, not an eclipse, a strong Piscean new moon, but Mercury went retrograde for pretty much the whole month. We're only just coming out of it into April, and you're still going to have another few weeks to, for Mercury to get back into full motion. So you might be kind of spinning out dizzy, like, you know, like when you have a car crash and you think, oh, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. And the next minute you kind of go, whoa, wait a minute, what just happened? Also, going through March, the Pisces energy would in astrology would be the maximum opposition to you. So you might have felt completely stretched and pulled to the limits of your ability and endurance. And now you're just slowly, gently starting to get back into the groove again, right? So please allow for that. So with the Hermit energy here, my feeling is that you might have had nowhere to go, nowhere to turn to except oneself to figure out what to do and how to be, uh, having had a lot of energy reflected back to you from life, circumstances, a significant other, where you end up, like it or not, all the, all the forces of the universe literally even though some of them can be catastrophic, ultimately, it's what it is. Things are the way they are. And it's a question of how do you deal with that uh, in order to be happy? In other words, at an extreme level of consciousness, like we try to do here at Terra Illumination, your happiness is not necessarily contingent upon the love of another. Okay, It's ultimately about discovering that this is something that I have to figure out inside of myself. I, I'm the only one who can love myself, okay? Uh, in order to love thyself, that's one of the credos here at Terra Illumination, love thyself, okay? And it's an extremely, it's one of the toughest journeys of all in this lifetime. And it can feel very lonely. It can be, feel very solitary as you go on the pathway of discovery about how you become your own guiding light, okay? But the beauty is that in so doing, then you attain tremendous wisdom and knowledge and internal happiness that no one else can take from you, no matter what happens. Whether you get dumped, whether someone dumps you, whether you go bankrupt, whether there's losses, uh, any kind of really tragic uh, challenges going on. So long as you're still alive walking on this planet, then you still have yourself, okay? Very important to know that. Don't be scared of being like an individual as opposed to a part of a couple. A lot of people are, are, are terrified to be without a relationship. They feel uh, like sometimes worthless, undervalued, underappreciated, misunderstood, like who am I without a relationship, okay? Maybe it's time to realize that um, it's perfectly okay not to have a relationship, even though a lot of people want a relationship. It, that's why it's such a huge theme in tarot readings and astrology. The, the energy of relationship, the self and the other, because that's where we get the maximum sense of reflection, especially when you have an opposition type energy. Okay, let's go deep into you. Let's so let's just go to the top. Sorry, let me rephrase that. Look at this. We're going to deal with this energy now. Okay, let's have a look. So, with the hierophant here, we're starting off with big cards. Okay. So it might feel for you, Virgo, is that there, there's a lot of events, circumstances, conditions, experiences happening in your relationship that feel as though they're beyond your control. And that can be very disorienting, especially because, Virgos, I know you like to have things in an orderly manner, including relationship, having things that work, tangible, measurable evidence that things are working. And it might be very hard to pin down or understand or deal with it with this kind of energy uh, 
like beaming around you. Okay, but it also is an important thing to realize that eventually, at some point in life, you have to come to terms with that energy. Okay, so in doing so, with the hierophant over here, this looks like a very, very solemn, sober, almost let's say, very, very serious energy that you're radiating where you're realizing that it's almost like, this is going to sound really weird, almost having to be married to oneself, first and foremost, before we can be married to another or relating to another. Like if our codes of life, if our systems of life, if our belief systems, our habits, our practices are let's say, inadequate or not fully formed or immature, then we become very vulnerable in relationship to others. In other words, it's almost like you would, you would effectively attract the kind of energy that you need in order to evolve, adapt, grow, in order to blossom. And sometimes that can be uncomfortable. In other words, you know, when we end up in a relationship dynamic, where you think it's this and it turns into something horrific. You know, there's a reason why these things happen. It's because we're all growing and evolving together. People come together, they become intimate in some way, shape or another. And in so, do, so doing, especially in the context of relationship, that's where we often have the most energy of discovery, of self-discovery. And sometimes it's very painful because we discover the code systems, the beliefs of life, and everything that we thought and understood was like status quo and structure and stability and honor and respect, like good old fashioned, you know, values in relationship, were not fully formed or were not fully honored or respected or expressed. So my feeling here is with the Hierophant is that this is what you would like. It would be very nice, and so that's what you're radiating. It's just, in other words, you know what? I want something that actually works. I want something that works better than anything that I've known already, whether I'm in a relationship or not. If I am something and it works so-and-so, I want it to work better. I want to create a higher standard of order, a higher standard of structure that will withstand the scrutiny of let's say the universe. In other words, using universal laws, universal codes, universal truths, as opposed to subjective truths, subjective realities that happen in relationship. So often what happens in relationship, when we're relating like this, self to other, other to self, and we're either ignoring the rest of what's going on, and this is just all action, reaction, action, reaction. What are you trying to get out of me? Oh, well, what are, what are you trying to get out of me? And everything's driven by hormones and instincts and the limbic system, the, uh, the autonomic, you know, our, our, our animal programming, okay? As opposed to looking at it from the great beyond and seeing what's actually happening here in the storyline. So what about the other? Okay, with the Eight of Pentacles here, my feeling is that... Um, well, one, one obvious impression is they might be very self-absorbed um, in working on themselves, developing themselves in their own way, shape, or form. It doesn't mean it's good for you or bad for you. It's just that it's, it's almost like the energy of being preoccupied. And it might be that this is something to do with the feeling of isolation and separation that you might be experiencing, Virgo, over here uh, because of maybe what happened in March. Okay, so here we are in April. If you're in a position now where your desire would be to have like, like some kind of sacred order to things according to like divine order as opposed to human man-made or personally made order, and you're not experiencing that because someone over here is preoccupied with taking care of business in a way that they feel is perfectly legitimate, honest, and responsible in relationship, but it doesn't really foster much of a sense of love or harmony from what I'm sensing here. On the other hand, it could be that they are working on doing what they feel they have to do in order to invest and grow themselves in order to prosper and blossom in the relationship. 
It just might not feel that way. You know, that can often happen with couples that uh, spend time apart where there's a lot of work pressure and pressures to make money, pressures to abide by, you know, the relationship codes. Like if you're a married couple, you have obligations together. Very often things like mortgages, car payments, uh, old college debts, college loans, joint credit card payments. Uh, living expenses, all of these things that really, really pile up and they have to be taken care of in ordinary day-to-day -day life. And that can be so consuming where people start to think, well, that is your life. It's all about work, 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 work to make money, 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 so we can afford our relationship. And you know, if you want to live your life that way, you can. Some people do. Okay, There is more to life than that. You might, Virgo, be dealing with someone who is very absorbed in that kind of way right now. No harm intended here. It's just that sometimes it might feel like, well, what about us? You know, what about us? You know, uh, are you there? Are you there? Hmm. So let's look deep down inside of you, Virgo. Okay. With the Seven of Cups here, my feeling is that you have a lot of dreams, desires, and ambitions for how love should be, how you would love, how you would love love to be, how you feel inspired from the great beyond about what constitutes love. And you might be seeing it all and learning it all and understanding it all in this relationship dynamic <clears throat> in such a way that is almost dazzling. It's almost like at some point, it's like, wow, this is amazing. This could be so amazing. Like all, all these like notions and ideas of love that uh, never really existed in your life before starting to become apparent. Like, oh, maybe we could do this or that, be this or be that, or discovering new things about yourself in the context of love and relationship that you never really had a chance to do except until right now in the context of this person. So it might be that they're, they're actually consciously, deliberately investing in the growth and the abundance of the relationship. And you can actually see, you can, you can like witnessing the work, but it's like, to me, it looks like an observation from distance. And because it, to me, it looks like there's no absolute proof here about what's going on. This looks like a, a, a bit like a, uh, this energy is like really, really like, if this is the relationship, it's really, really, really like far away over here while you're being you and what you're looking for is something actually more communal, more intimate, especially if it involves dreams of intimacy and love and relationship that have been either suppressed or unavailable or unknown before this time and now it's starting to become known to you sometimes i see this as the einstein card or the or a genius card or an artist card it's the kind of energy that happens deep down when you do uh, like creative visualization visioning and you're tuning into the energies of the great beyond in order to manifest something here in three dimensions okay so it looks to me like there's a very clear, like an awareness of what's going on here. But with this energy that's happening now over here, to me, it looks like there's a lot of creative visualization and visioning uh, at the spirit level, at the level of heart, your, your connection with the great beyond in such a way that only you can do. It's between yourself and heaven and your angels and guardians, and you're doing the work, okay? This is active, creative visioning, and it's literally like turning yourself almost into an artist from the inside out. If you think of yourself as an artist, and you are like mixing up your paints, you're sketching out the things about how they could be, like planning, visioning, uh, uh, seeing it very, very clearly, like in your dreams, and asking for inspiration to come to you uh, through your dreams, just the way that Einstein uh, so-called discovered E equals MC squared. 
Okay, it was already out there in the heavens, but it took Einstein to go into his uh, very dreamy, ethereal state of mind to open himself up and basically say, heaven, angels, please give me the answer that I've been trying to figure out for decades. I just, I'm, I, I just need to know. And then he spontaneously knew and poof, that came to him because he opened the gateways to heaven. Okay, so that's what I feel is happening here with you. Over here, deep inside of the other. Okay, well, there's fundamental, deep, irreversible transformations happening with the significant other, and things are moving on in a very, let's say, progressive way. They know it. They're aware of it. I don't think they're scared of it. I, just, I think that they're at the soul level. They are accepting that big changes are underway for them at the very, very core level. They're feeling it in their life. They're doing everything they can to mind their own business, uh, be very responsible, self-sustaining. And the, and the relationship is basically taking care of itself uh, because it's like, to me, it looks like you're not imposing order, but you are in a very subtle, discreet, private way, uh, demanding order and new structure and new upgrades to love and relationship compared to how you've known it before. And... They sense it. They can sense the transformation that is happening deep inside of them. My feeling is because of their alignment with you, your alignment with them, and your visioning about how this is going to evolve and grow to where it is headed, wherever that might be. But that is part of the voyage of discovery here because to me it looks like you're very much learning and living as you go along, okay, in the context of relationship. You don't know all the answers right now. You are entering into a field of wisdom as you go. Let's have a look at the relationship itself. Okay, with the Nine of Wands here, to me this is uh, very encouraging in that it looks to me like if the relationship is under a lot of pressure because of the huge changes that are happening. Okay, also, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go off on a tangent here a little bit. Okay. Okay, so with Uranus and Taurus, okay, I don't know if you saw that playlist from March, What Now? It's about this gateway energy that we had to, all of us on the planet had to live through in March. And we're just starting to come on the outside of that gateway right now. And one of the key elements of that was Uranus and Taurus at the zero degree point, right at the end of March. And so it's now the gateway is open and it's opening up a whole new vast horizon for you, new perspectives, new opportunities, new ways of looking at your life and your world from a much more, let's say, a wise person's perspective that was not available before. So in your situation as a Virgo, Uranus and Taurus would be happening up in your ninth house, okay? That would be the ninth house of like, expansion of consciousness, uh, seeking uh, new horizons, foreign relationships, foreign relationships with you, you in a relationship with a foreign person, foreign places, foreign lands, everything expanding in your whole experience of relationship, expanding and growing almost in a very dizzying way. And you are tuning into that and you are feeling it. And they are responding in such a way that it's happening at a very subliminal level where the, the radical, unpredictable, harmonious changes that are going to happen that have just started happening with you, Virgo, in that ninth house area in your astrological chart. It's, I'm saying it's harmonious because the Taurus energy is very harmonious with Virgo, Earth sign with Earth sign, okay? So all I'm hinting at here is that this whole relationship dynamic is really stretching you, really, really taking you up to whole new heights, opening doorways to new levels of frequencies where you can vibrate and oscillate and evolve and grow and adapt to higher frequencies in love and relationship. And that can be very daunting. It can be very scary. It can also be very exciting. And the thing is, it, to me, it looks like it puts the relationship under a lot of pressure, but it's chosen. In other words, you've chosen this, okay? You chose to get into this 
they are they have chosen to get into this they are investing and they're working and they are literally committing themselves to this and my feeling is just like i'm going to make this happen somehow or other this has to happen i don't know how a way it's going to play out because there's a lot of shifting and change changing happening here even though the energy of transformation is showing up here in the co-star of your movie here for april that degree of transformation, let's look at it as a reflection about all the profound changes that are happening with you and that have to happen because of your wish, your wish and your desire to grow and evolve and experience like what I would say, new levels, new understandings, new visions, new experiences in love, okay? And so that is what's happening. It's the law of attraction in action. So you're getting that back to you and it puts you under pressure, them under pressure, and the relationship under pressure. But there's no question that you guys can handle it. The relationship can handle it. It's like an against all odds type of energy. And the crucible is perfectly strong enough and capable enough to withstand the transformations and the changes that are happening here. What is fermenting, okay? Wow, okay. So with the stress, look at this, okay? Okay, so we have the strength card here, all right? So dear, dear Virgos, what I'm sensing here is that there's a lot of like taming of the animal, you know, with that, like just the visual depiction here, like, because you are, you know, I'm not trying to demean anybody here, but we are animals. Okay. We are driven by very, very powerful, very highly complex animal forces that are built into our DNA, our nervous system, our sensory system, our limbic system, uh, all our senses, all our senses as human beings are designed to intimate and be good providers, okay? In order so that when we intimate, we have something of substance, a relationship of substance, which would be called survival. In an old fashioned sense, it would be the relationship of like, I need you, you need me. I'm gonna make sure that you're the right person for me and I'm gonna make sure you're the right person for me at this moment in time, okay? So it's very, I'm looking at something here that's very, very primal. And with all these big cards here, 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 and here, it's happening in a way that might seem very fated. Again, that wouldn't surprise me because of with Uranus and Taurus at zero degrees up there in your ninth house, like opening the everything, like opening the windows to whole new opportunities here for you, uh, putting a lot of pressure on you, the other, and the relationship, but it's actually really good. It's really, really good for you. It's good for them. It's good for the relationship. And it brings things into focus where you realize, wow, there's so much more that goes on in a relationship that I ever thought, because you might have been previously operating from, let's say, an unconscious level where it was you know, operating from animal instinct, you know, I'm hungry, I need to eat. Oh, I'm tired, I need to sleep. Oh, I feel lonely, I need to cuddle, or whatever it is. All these perfectly normal, natural, healthy human behaviors. But it looks to me like the gates are opening big and wide to whole other new levels of understanding here, okay? This is a living, growing thing. So this is like a little plant. What's happening here, okay, what's happening here is that it's like discovering in the context of a loving relationship, how to, what's the word, what's the word, uh, how to, like it's, like it's in alchemy. It's like when you uh, transform you know, in those mythologies, when they transform lead into gold, I think of it as turning garbage into gold. When we take all the, all the, the fermentation that happens in life between self and another and turning it into something actually amazing here, where you start to conduct your relationship uh, less and less and less from the perspective of the animal who needs the other and the an this animal who needs the other. And it becomes much more of a spiritualized journey. It becomes very, very gentle. It very, becomes very, very serene, where the key ingredients of loving relationship, all these delicious things out there that have might have been very undefined before, now become very defined in such a way that what really, really counts to you, the other, 
and in the relationship itself and where it's worth putting in the passion and the direction is to look at the relationship from the perspective of heaven. Like, why are you here? Why are they here? Why are you here together specifically with this person as opposed to that person? And you discover it's a massive, amazing, incredible journey, some way, somehow. And what really, really counts is like, like formal commitments to self and other in new ways that are transformed where we set aside the carnal needs, just the raw carnal needs for humans to reproduce and multiply and eat and make money and have stuff and have more and more and more of that. But instead, we see it as a spiritual journey where by like living, let's say, let's say t just taming, taming the hormones, taming the animal and tuning into this more spiritual aspects of the journey and the growth and the potential that happens with you, you, Virgo, as an individual, then the whole relationship takes on a much bigger, broader perspective. It's like going to an IMAX theater movie as opposed to watching you know, the same movie on a Netflix on a laptop. Okay, that's what I'm sensing here. So it becomes much more vivid and real, and it makes a lot more sense. And you can see your connection with the divine, how you and the other are connected through divinity. Okay? And how you can tap into that going forward into the future. Now, this might I'm not saying it's easy, Oh, but that's the storyline that I'm sensing here. It looks actually that there's a lot because there's so much change that's happening here that can put a lot of pressure, but you can handle it, Virgo, because you're asking for it. OK, you've asked for this. You've wanted this. Do something deep down. You've um, no matter how scary it is, it's what you visioned and it's what you're getting. So it's very, very nutritious to me. This looks really, really good for you. It just might not be in a way that you had ever conceived of or ever imagined a relationship could be or how a relationship would evolve. Okay, so all the best, Virgo. I know you can handle it. Well done. Thank you for being here. Please do the subscribes. Really helps so much on the channel. Uh, the likes and I love the comments. I try to type reply to everyone that I can. And most of all, membership. It really, really helps the channel uh, when we have uh, more and more members. Okay, so check out the links below. All right. Bye-bye, Virgo. All the best in April. And check in. Let me know how things go, okay? Bye-bye.